Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on doing some wiring on the Ranger. Going to be hooking up the fuel pump, uh, starter, and ignition circuits, and show you some of the other stuff we got going on. So we're going to be working under the hood here. Um, as most of you probably already know, that I'm using the Ford standalone ACU harness, so it comes uh, pre-wired with the uh, directions on everything to um, hook up. And then it has, actually has four wires, uh, but I got the three main ones coming out here because one of them is a um, hot lead. I'm not using that. And then, so it has its own wire diagram, and I have this factory Ford wire diagram for Ranger and Bronco 2. Got off of eBay, and that's pretty nice. Um, I'll probably put in a photo here. But pretty much, um, this here is the driver's side fender well. And we're going to be tapping into a couple of plugs here. That is not the right one. Yeah, this one over here is the right one. So we got uh, C116, um, C17, and then C101. And so I ha um, nice thing about this is I have the whole har wiring harness that I took off. So I got these plugs right here. This one here I think is the C116. So it was um, going to be tying into this uh, wire right here for the ignition on because this one would have sent power to the coil and the computer. Well, I don't know about the computer, but anyway, the ignition power on. So that comes on in start and run. And then this one here is for the fuel pump. So we're going to be tying into this pink wire here. And then we also want to make sure to hook up this black and white wire because it actually act is a ground for the ABS module. And then this one here, I think I'm getting this right, yeah. This one here is going to be uh, the starter uh, signal. So when we turn the, the key on to start position, it'll get the signal to activate the starter. Um, this Ford um, harness is a nice little, if I can open this up with one hand. There you go. Has a nice little relay box there. Um, so it has its own built-in relay for the starter um, and then the starter style has a built-in solenoid down on it so you don't need any starting solenoid that would have been factory over here on the side but we will be having to supply power to this because this is the main factory uh, Ranger power distribution block so later we'll be running um, a wire up from the alternator down there up over here to a little uh, bus bar type setup well, that'll hook up, get power, and we'll run power all the way along the front here. We'll be putting a battery right down here so the power will come over to that. And we'll run power. These are uh, the main power wires. We have positive, ground, and then a power for a electric fan. So the computer for the EcoBoost will turn on the fan where it needs to be, all that good stuff. So we don't have to put an extra uh, heat uh, sensors or anything like that in the cooling system and so later on when we get the cooling package that'll have an electric fan anyway so right now going to be working on just the basic uh, key on stuff so this is part of the harness that is supplied with from ford so what we're going to do is kind of make a jumper harness we're going to wire in uh, these plugs here as to where they correspond onto the truck and stuff and then we'll wrap it all into some of this convoluted tubing and let's we'll all tuck in nice and look like a nice factory job all right so we're getting back to some wiring been a little while since that last clip there uh, but anyway we'll flip you around to the truck here um, got that jumper harness in here um, i'm going to work on some main power wiring right now and i'm going to install this custom made battery battery box is right over in here and we're going to put it over in this here so I designed uh, this bracket to fit a optimum battery it's kind of going to sit down here. but first we need to cut out that tab there I think that was for the mounting of the uh, window washer reservoir uh, if we get around to installing one of those we'll do something different and anyway, we got to cut that out because this is going to fit right down in here It'll look better once you actually get in there. We've got a mounting point there, a mounting point here, which will go on the other side, 
and then kind of tuck down the another mounting point. Um, when I designed this, I didn't put holes in those because I didn't exactly know how it was going to interface. So I'll go ahead and um, drill my holes where I think it'll fit. Uh, but right now we'll get this cut out. So we got the holes drilled in here and the tray clamped in there and relatively leveled out. So now we're going to go ahead and punch some holes through there using the pre-drilled ones for lining up and the same size drill bit. And then we'll get it bolted in there. So this is a little fun fact here, I was investigating this wiring um, and most of this wiring is pretty nice, it has all these leads and stuff and we have this lead power one, comes up in here, the, the, the ties out here and goes into the power box right here. Simple terminal. Well I have my suspicion that this didn't go anywhere up in there, it just tied right over there. So see that that move there but my my suspicion is correct that's just goes straight across there I don't understand why Ford did that um, it's so close to here why not just let someone tie into that there why I loop it around boggles my mind because it looks kind of like crap and what even if it was why not just keep it in there anyway so I'm going to pull this all out and because this 
here is just going to go straight back to the battery. Um, so, got the battery tray and a junk Optima sitting here. I uh, realized that I measured wrong on that, so we'll have to shorten that up because right now there's about a three quarters of an inch gap in there, and that's supposed to be tight down on there. Anyway, uh, trying to figure out the layout for the electrical and we got this big hole over here where the old battery used to be. We're going to put an air box and that's what we got here. It's this custom fab air box. Give you a little look around it here. Originally I wasn't intending on welding it. Um, I had some seams where I was going to rivet it but since I got my TIG welder, went ahead and welded that up. And then for the air filter in there, that's actually an air raid air filter. Uh, it's part of the setup for a Mustang cold air intake. The car I got this engine out of had that in it. So I figured I might as well use it for my swap here. And it has this uh, piece of plastic adapter, I guess you'd call it, that See it, there's a hose clamp on the inside here that attaches the filter to that and then it steps it down to I think three and a half inch. So we'll end up going from that to our intake and then it has a nice three bolt flange here to attach it. So it makes a really good air filter setup. And then that's, I'll show you why the hip holes are cut in, the, in those specific spots. But uh, we'll end up putting a, a clear piece of Lexan or polycarbonate over the top of that. Um, but it's gonna fit down this hole here. Additionally, to make that clear, we had to make a cut in this upright here, because originally this kind of set flush on the outside and it was gonna interfere with that, so we um, used a step drill bit, drilled, and then cut with the cutoff wheel to make a nice uh, radius. And then I aligned it, so you can see that there with a piece of rubber hose so there's no sharp edges and then that tucks up right out of the way and we'll get this in here so for mounting we're going to utilize uh, this factory bracket here um, well it's actually like a spot loaded piece of angle iron original battery battery tray was spot welded on there as you can see I drilled out spot wells they'll kind of wet rest over on that side and I'll probably have to build a bracket right there. But I'm gonna get this finalized in here, figure out my mounting, and that will give me an idea of where I can mount a uh, battery terminal over here and how I need to run the electrical around it. So we won't get to the uh, intake right yet. I still need to get some tubing. I was gonna use steel tubing, but now like, like now I was able to weld this, weld aluminum with my TIG water, I'm gonna switch over to some three and a half inch aluminum tubing. Just make it look nicer than having a piece of steel tubing in there. I could still use a steel, but anyway, I digress on that. So yeah, I'm gonna work on getting this box secured in here, and then we can figure out how we're gonna run the wire. Got that mounted in there for now. Uh, still need to make a little tab on the side there for it to secure to, but utilize two sheet metal screws into that original bracket. Uh, I think I forgot to mention it before, but the cutouts in here are for the airflow. Um, Factory Ranger has some, some ducting there, and I think right down in there is where the, um, one of the factory air intakes would have been, but I feel like Especially this right over in here is going to be a good uh, source for the cold air come in and a little bit extra from there. Um, we'll see how it works out. Anyway, moving on to the wiring. Um, got this, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, not really a bus bar, but just a, a mounting stud for electrical. I uh, got it on Amazon, it wasn't too expensive. I'll put a link in the description. But what it's going to allow me to do is I'm going to mount it up there on the side of the fender. And it'll give us a spot to connect this wire, wire off the alternator, and then the wire is going to run around over to the battery. So a nice solid mounting spot for our positive side. So we'll figure out the best place for that. Someplace right in there, get it mounted up, and then I need to 
look on the instructions from the Ford Performance Pack wiring harness and figure out where uh, how they want this mounted in line. I'm thinking probably right in there, and I think it <clears throat> it's a main fuse from the battery to this terminal here, but I definitely need to double check on that. But something right in there, be a quick shot from the battery post. Then we have to figure out the wire from here down to the starter. The factory one, it's made in with the alternator harness, which would have worked fine if the alternator was in the factory location over here. But since it's going over here, it's just gonna be easier to make a new custom wire to go down there. So I ran down to the parts store uh, grab some wire. Of course, they didn't have uh, everything that I needed, so I'll have to wait for some of it, but we'll get some of the, the battery wiring done up. Uh, but... Got some of the wiring done and picked up some of the 4-gauge wire. Uh, I'll show you what we got. Did the, the ground cable here, 2-gauge. Um, down the frame and then from the frame over to see if we can sneak this down in there to an alternator uh, well where the alternator originally mounted there's a stud out there so I hooked up to that and then went from this cable here over to um, the grounding uh, bolt on the fender well so the body's grounded with an eight gauge wire frames grounded with two gauge and it goes to the motor with two gauge. Um, this uh, terminal here, a little bit larger, so meant for a one knot, so I was able to have extra room for two cables there. Uh, gonna switch over and do the positive side. Have the two gauge cable. All right, so I got the positive leads here all done up, kind of like I did with the negative side. I did uh, two wires into this post. Uh, this terminal here is meant for two watts, so it had plenty of room for a two gauge and four gauge wire. Uh, ran the two gauge down to the starter terminal down there, so we'll get plenty of juice. Then the four gauge goes up to our mega fuse right here. And the other side of that is our four gauge wire that we talked about earlier. Runs along here, kind of zip tied and tucked behind, and with this other main wiring loom. Took out the air cleaner box that's sitting down there. Had to get some room in here to, to work with it. Zip tied it around, and then we tied it up there on the, the post there. Um, have the rest of that four gauge laying around, and there's plenty of wire to run down here when we get our alternator. For now, uh, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. Uh, got some more to do. Uh, next, probably as next is this a bundle of wire here um, kind of has let's see what I've got on that one got the starter command well that goes to the starting solenoid we have I think this is the alternator that is the boost pressure intake air box which will be going over here and I think that's it and we also have this gray wire here that's our tat signal so we'll be routing that Got some other stuff, might also jump in on the instrument cluster. Um, got some aftermarket gauges, I forgot what brand they are. Anyway, aftermarket gauges to put on that. So we'll have an uh, electronic speedometer, electronic um, tachometer, like they normally are. But anyway, uh, so yeah, like this, uh, this content, like the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button, bell notification, and then comment down below. Let me know what you think. See you guys later.